Hey, it's Mike here, and today another Quartz Gezogged video response. I did one in response to their meat video. This time it's about milk, and the video is titled Milk, White Poison, or Healthy Drink. For those that don't know, this is a massive channel with about 10 million subscribers. It's actually a German channel with a British narrator, and people are clearly interested in this question. The video's gotten about 6 million views in less than a week. It was officially trending for a while, and I will say they made some great points, some great health points, and they actually added some ethical environmental points, which I really appreciate, but some of the main most important health points on our leading killing diseases fell really short. So we're going to add some research on there and also some research on points that they missed. And they definitely missed quite a few, just like how in their meat video, for example, they were like, oh, you can eat an unrestricted amount of fish with no health concerns, not mentioning any negative effects, not any of the heavy metals or anything like that. Anyway, I'll link that response video down below. But most of all, you guys just requested this video a lot. So enough rambling. Let's go. I want to whip past the first few minutes because they were mainly just covering the history of milk. It wasn't health claims either way, but eventually they make the claim, which I really appreciate. They said that 65% of planet Earth is lactose intolerant, which is true. Thank you for saying that. However, later in the video, they make some statements that just outright ignore or contradict this concern for lactose intolerance. Anyway, let's cut to the main health effects, starting with cancer. Some older studies found a connection between milk and a high risk of breast, colon, and prostate cancer. But meta-analyses found no impact on your cancer risk. Thankfully, and I really appreciate this, they cite their sources. So we're able to see exactly what they're using to back this statement. And they're using this meta-analysis from about 15 years ago, which also happens to say, quote, a modest positive correlation was found for colon and rectal cancers in both sexes. And it's weird that that doesn't really make it into the conclusion which they clearly grabbed from anyway, worth mentioning. But I really wanna focus in on prostate cancer because it's the most common male cancer. And looking to what is probably the largest study on the topic, it's a review of meta-analyses. And about half of the studies that they found showed a positive association between intake of dairy and prostate cancer. And that includes studies like this one, which didn't find a statistically significant positive association, which, you know, happened to be funded by the dairy industry. And yeah, that funding doesn't mean it's guaranteed wrong, but it does mean that it's four times more likely to have found a positive result for its industry. So bottom line, there's a major concern with prostate cancer here. And for continuity, I want to skip to their next prostate statement or prostatement. Only studies on prostate cancer showed an increased risk for people who consumed more than one and a quarter liters of milk a day. But again, the association is inconsistent and other studies don't find any effect. Yes, there are some industry-funded studies making the results inconsistent, so let's just throw our hands up. No, let's not do that. Instead, let's quickly crack open a couple meta-analyses on prostate cancer. From this one, they found a 68% increased odds for prostate cancer with high versus low milk consumption. Of course, that wasn't industry funded. And no, the Prostate Cancer Association is not just a ridiculous 1.25 liters a day or four cups a day or more. A lot of studies looked at high versus low as just daily consumption for high or greater than five days a week for high it's wrong. And here's another one that is newer than that mega study from the British Medical Journal I mentioned earlier. And it found also an increased odds of cancer, but it goes as far as to say that the connection is so bad that men should minimize dairy consumption. They even outline a causal mechanism, part of which we'll cover in a bit. But the point here is that there's not nothing to worry about with prostate cancer. There's a strong connection. And here they are again, back on the topic of colorectal cancer. On the contrary, the calcium in milk might even have a protective effect against colon cancer. Although this could be calcium in general, it's not clear milk plays a role in this effect. I think it's very unlikely that dairy actually has a protective effect of prostate cancer, especially when certain studies are finding a positive association. It's more likely that within the ecosystem of the standard American diet, people are replacing things like meat, processed meats that cause colorectal cancer, with dairy. It's either a hamburger or pizza. It's not that it's truly protective like certain plant sources of calcium, like dark leafy greens, which we know to have things like chlorophyll that protect against the carcinogenic effect of heme iron in red meat, for example. I also wanna mention that I don't think dairy needs to cause colorectal cancer to be a concern for cancer. I've said it before and I'll say it again, 
a carcinogen doesn't need to cause all cancers to be carcinogenic. For example, if we did studies and found out that plutonium doesn't cause finger cancer, it wouldn't be any less of a carcinogen. So we have that prostate cancer connection, which I think is strong enough that the WHO should evaluate it in terms of a carcinogen for the prostate, but we also have other cancers that are still on the table back to that mega BMJ study. They looked at one meta-analysis on endometrial cancer and that meta-analysis found a positive association. So there's a concern for women here too. Another one that wasn't mentioned in the court's gazogged video is testicular cancer and to just lightning round a few studies on that. Here's one that found that higher dairy consumption was associated with a 40% increased risk. Here's another one that found 187% odds with high dairy consumption for prostate cancer. And finally, another one that found about a 37% increased risk of prostate cancer with high dairy. And they point to galactose, which apparently can lead to toxicity and fuel cancer topic for another time. The point here is that while this segment seemed to be designed to put people at ease with their concerns of milk and cancer, more research shows that you probably shouldn't be too relaxed about it. Anyway, they continue. All in all, the research seems to show that if you drink between 100 to 250 milliliters of milk per day, cancer is not a concern. Yes, drink some milk and you are immune to cancer. I'm joking, I know that's not what they said, but I don't think this is a good way to approach any type of food that could have a negative health effect. Like limit it so that it's not dangerous. I mean, there's probably an amount of cigarettes that you could smoke that probably wouldn't increase risk of cancer. Not saying you should do that. Not equating, just comparing. Anyway, I'll also add that there is a group of people that drinks zero milk and they have, from this meta-analysis, 15% lower risk of total cancer, and that is vegans. Now I wanna move into the territory of hormones, and before I get to their whole segment on that, there's one hormone that is very pertinent to cancer. You hear me talk about it a lot, and that is IGF-1 insulin-like growth factor one, and from this study, quote, IGF-1 may be either absorbed from milk or stimulated by its ingestion or both. And it's important to note that higher levels of IGF-1 fuel every stage of cancer and cancer spreading. And back to that newer meta-analysis on prostate cancer, they point to how prostate cancer is a hormone-dependent cancer, and that IGF-1 in milk could be fueling it, among other things. Now, this is where it gets really interesting to sort of ease concerns about hormones in milk. They say that to get enough estrogen to equate to a birth control pill, you'd have to drink a ridiculous amount of cow's milk. There are hormones in milk, but only in very low concentrations. For example, to get the same amount of hormones as from the pill, you'd need to drink about 5,000 liters of milk. There are a couple issues here. Firstly, looking to the show notes, the paper that they use as a reference for estrogen levels literally concludes, quote, the collected data from other researchers and our own data are indicating that the presence of steroid hormones in dairy products could be counted as an important risk factor for various cancers in humans. Kortskasag, thank you for citing your sources, but make sure that they support your claims. And I know they're probably so annoyed with me by now. They responded in a comment to my last video. They're probably like, oh, here comes this stupid vegan again, nitpicking our videos. How did this hair get even messier? That was more Austrian, I think. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I think your animations are really good, though. But let's do an independent comparison of hormones in milk and the pill to see if I come up with the same numbers, just out of curiosity. Well, we know that the pill has anywhere between 10 and 35 micrograms of estrogen in it. So just 10 micrograms is enough estrogen to make your body think that it's pregnant and stop your cycle. That's pretty important. So according to this study, Western children are consuming about 40 to 100 nanograms of estrogens from cow's milk a day. Also a large amount of progesterone, hold that thought. So that means that these children, not adults, these children are consuming enough estrogen through cow's milk to be about 1% of what is required to completely disrupt the hormone system of an adult human. So could that maybe have some other effect on their hormone system? Well, we'll talk about it in a second, but why were my numbers so different than their numbers? Well, first of all, just in terms of the pill, it ranges from 10 to 35. They, of course, chose the 35 micrograms. It only takes 10 to disrupt that system, so I chose 10. They also chose a study with 10 times lower estrogen amounts than at least the first study that I looked at, and that was probably because it was sampling milk that didn't include pregnant cows. But the reality is the milk supply that people drink from includes pregnant cows, which have way higher levels of estrogens and other hormones, so it brings all the hormone levels up. And a quick point about that, several micrograms of progesterone that would be consumed in cow's milk by children, which apparently is pretty good at surviving the digestive system. Well, it appears to downregulate semen production. And this study found that dairy intake was associated with lower sperm count and sperm mobility. Tell that to your poor little semen cells. 
Hey sailor, you're swimming the wrong way. You're not supposed to swim toward the glass of milk. But I can smell the hormones from here, and milk is all I know. But regardless of counting nanograms of estrogen and so forth, does milk as an entire package appear to have an effect on human hormone levels? And yes, it just so happens to do so. That made no sense. From this study, after drinking cow's milk, the blood levels in people's human bodies had changes in hormones. For example, a statistically significant 20% increase in estrone, a type of estrogen, and a 20% decrease in testosterone in both sexes, their blood. The study went as far as to conclude that, quote, sexual maturation of prepubertal children could be affected by the ordinary intake of cow's milk. Pubertal, I'm sorry, that's just a funny word. But seriously, this is important stuff from USN Haynes data, quote. There's some evidence that greater milk intake is associated with an increased risk of early menarche or first period or lower age of period. So, well, yeah, maybe some hormones are destroyed in digestion and perhaps it's not the exact estrogen in milk that turns into the estrogen in your body, but clearly that cocktail of mammalian hormones is having an effect on the human body. Anyway, next is a kind of interesting point. Especially in regions where people struggle to get enough calories, milk can contribute to a healthy life and lower child mortality. I think it's interesting that they went here for two reasons. First of all, that's also true of sugar. The sugar industry would probably make the same claim. Oh, the sugar calories in the developing world help young children not starve. But the reality is that, you know, they're showing an African village and African Americans, 75% of them, three out of four of them are lactose intolerant. And that seems to be an equivalent percentage or higher throughout Africa proper. So maybe it's not the best to be claiming that this is a solution for them. Anyway, I'm giving them a lot of flack, but there were definitely some statements in here that I really appreciated. Like if you were to make a greatest hits album off of this video, here's one that I would listen to and enjoy. You do not need to drink milk to be healthy. You do not need to drink milk to be healthy. You do not need to drink milk to be healthy. Music to my ears. They also mentioned that milk can contribute to being overweight. I agree, but in interest of time, let's zoom right to the big ones, which is, well, this statement. Similarly, meta-analyses could not find any impact from milk or dairy products on your risk of heart disease, stroke, or your total mortality. And this is where I actually kind of have a, a really big problem. They start funding National Dairy Council studies and studies done by career dairy scientists. And for example, they use this study to back their heart disease claim. Yes, this study was funded by Nestle, which at the time had about a $4 billion US dairy business until it sold it last year. So. Not good. And again, because of our standard American diet choices, one bad food or another, a well-meaning non-industry funded study could also find no difference if it wasn't looking in the right way. But to Harvard, who summarized this nurse's health study finding pretty well, they say that, quote, what did predict risk of cardiovascular disease was fat swapping. And they say that, you know, replacing dairy fat with vegetable fat or polyunsaturated fat drops that risk of cardiovascular disease you know, by 10 and 24%. Furthermore, the same number of calories from dairy fat being replaced with whole grains was associated with 28% lower risk of cardiovascular disease. But on the other hand, if you replace those dairy fats with other animal fats like meat, you're gonna get a slight but basically meaningless increase in cardiovascular disease risk. Anyway, I think you get the point, but here's where the conclusion was irresponsible, and that is that within the Western world, dairy is the number one source of saturated fat in the diet. And from the most rigorous studies we have, you know, for example, this meta-analysis of controlled feeding trials, 395 of them increasing saturated fat results in higher cholesterol levels, and higher cholesterol levels are causally associated with heart disease. And people like to paint this as old news. No, a pretty recent massive analysis of 47 reviews and systematic meta-analyses by the UK government for the National Health Service found that higher saturated fat is linked to higher cholesterol and increased heart disease, and it should be swapped out. In other words, dairy should be swapped out. And their Q&A on the topic of cholesterol is also disappointing. The question is, is milk bad for my cholesterol level? Their answer is, there is cholesterol in milk, but our bodies are incredible systems which can adapt to our intake of this substance as long as we don't go overboard. A reasonable intake of dairy products does not alter the cholesterol in a negative way. Their source for that claim is what could probably be described as the most corrupt study I've ever seen, just in terms of the number of times dairy was mentioned in their funding paragraph. How did it even fit that many times? It actually uses the phrase quote, the favorable cholesterol altering effects of milk, cheese, and yogurt. 
Oh my God. It's one thing to maybe be like, okay, we can include, we can take into account some industry funded studies when we're coming to these conclusions. But when you're coming to these conclusions solely off industry funded studies, that's where I get worried. And it continues with their citation of that stroke and mortality claim they made earlier on their stroke studies. Well, one is funded directly by the dairy industry and the other has a researcher with ties to the dairy industry. And in terms of the mortality study, well, the author was previously awarded with a dairy innovation grant these are the opinions of the dairy industry. Now, because I can feel that this video is getting really long, I want to sort of nutshell, no pun intended, because that's what their name means. Uh, the last few points, and one is I appreciate that they mentioned the dairy connection to acne. They say that skim milk in particular is associated with a 25% increased risk of acne. That's huge to include. They do mention that dairy is a good source of B12, but I would add that virtually all plant milks are fortified with an equivalent amount of B12 at this point. There's several points that they also missed in terms of dairy's health effects. We're talking things like autoimmune diseases and the associations there. Both multiple sclerosis and type 1 diabetes have had dairy proteins implicated. Simply put, the concept is that if those dairy proteins, even partially digested, make it into your bloodstream, your immune system makes antibodies to fight those, but they're so similar to some of your own proteins in your body that they strip those off your body, whether it's the beta cells that create insulin on your pancreas or the myelin sheath around your brain cells, not good. Some of those cow proteins have also been implicated in sudden infant death syndrome. This is not an easy one to talk about. I don't want to make a lot of claims here, but the idea is it can affect baby breathing. And we have data showing that, for example, as Nutrition Facts says, So what they did was study infants who had recurrent life-threatening episodes, meaning apnea, where they stop breathing or turn blue or become limp, etc. The blood levels of bovine casomorphin in the babies with the acute life-threatening events average three times higher than healthy babies. You know, that's just not good. And then finally, there's the toxicity aspect through bioaccumulation. As the EPA says directly, quote, milk fat is likely to be among the highest dietary sources of exposure to persistent bioaccumulative and toxic contaminants. They then go on to mention a couple really good key points about dairy's environmental impact in terms of land use. They also say it emits more greenhouse gases than all plants combined, much appreciated. But here's the one statement that I'm like, did, did a vegan write this? Cows are impregnated over and over, separated from their young shortly after birth, and slaughtered once their tortured bodies are not productive anymore. We can't ignore that much of the milk we consume stems from an industry that is basically torture and contributes to climate change. So kudos to them for not just saying, oh, oh, just eat humane wash dairy instead. The reality is that in order to keep producing milk, cows need to be repeatedly impregnated and to remain economical, their calves are always taken away from them. That's the reality. Anyway, in the conclusion, they again majorly miss the mark. Milk is complicated. It's not harmful for the majority of the population and it's crucial for many people around the world. This is what I was talking about with the contradiction. The majority of the population, well, again, the majority of the world population is lactose intolerant. By definition, it's not healthy for them. And based off what I previously said, even that statement for a population that isn't lactose intolerant does not hold very well. In conclusion, while I'm very happy they included a lot of the points they did, they still missed the mark on those main diseases. That prostate cancer connection is really undeniable. We have some other ones like endometrial cancer, which are pretty alarming. And then in terms of heart disease, our leading killer, again, they really just completely ignored the saturated fat effect here. I don't know why they decided to do that, but they did. And as for their hormone claims, you saw I don't agree with their numbers, but that aside, it doesn't have to be a hormonal nuclear bomb to have an effect on the human body. Clearly, there is something going on there. We have those early periods, the lower sperm count, the changing of blood levels of estrogen and testosterone. Not good things. Finally, those other compelling points that I didn't even get to go that deep into due to time, like the autoimmune disease connection and the toxins and the acne that they mentioned. It just keeps on going on. So I feel like they left people feeling very comfortable continuing consuming dairy without really worrying about it at all. But we can end on a really positive note, and that is that you're not a baby cow, so you don't need to drink cow's milk. You can drink other milks and get all of that nutrition from food instead of that lactation. Vegans love to remind you it's a lactation, it's true. So let me know down below what you thought about this and their video and their claims and lack of claims in certain areas. So that's it, feel free to like, subscribe, notification bell, all that good stuff, and thanks for watching.